Miel Honick. I am 15 years old. I was born and raised in the Twin Cities area and have been a part of St. Joan of Arc since before I could remember. Since I was young, I was encouraged to take action where support is needed and speak out on topics I am passionate about. Part of the journey I have had with finding inspiration is greatly attribu attributed to St. Joan of Arc. This year's Advent theme is strongly connected to the SJA model of welcoming people wherever they are on their life journeys. Last year, it was difficult to be a harbor for those who needed it, which was all of us. Somehow, we still found places to dock with the help of those lonely lighthouses out at sea. Maybe it was a neighbor, a doctor, a mail deliverer, the squirrel that took home in your vents, or maybe it wasn't a person. I noticed something while under quarantine. The small stuff became so much more important. One day, a rainbow appeared, and we all ran into the street and took pictures. The first time it snowed last fall, my family turned on Christmas music and danced around the hallway. <laughs> Every flower peeping through the sidewalk cracks was brighter. Looking out at the moon became a nightly event. One thing stayed constant, our harbor, the earth. When I look at a harbor, I see boats and lighthouses which symbolize us, the people. But I also see water, wood, and animals. Earth is always here, but someday it might not be the mother earth we know. One day the rain won't fall here, which means no rainbows. One day the snow will stop cascading down and the flowers will dry up. One day the sky will be so full of gloom that the moon will be a distant memory. We all know that one day this will be a reality. What you don't know is how close it is. As Father Cassidy said last week, we are, all looking, we are always looking to someone to take, the, take on the role, to do the job, to save us all. However, it is no longer sustainable to rely on this someone. Everyone needs to commit. Everyone needs to take part. This is the story of someone. On September 24th, I had the pleasure of finally executing three months' worth of work. With the help of some friends from an activism group called Yeah Network, I had successfully planned a climate strike. Fridays for Future had announced their first in-person global strike since the pandemic, and I was not going to miss this one. Yeah Network is a youth-led eco-activist group, a part of Climate Generation, originally founded by Will Steiger. I joined Yeah in April of last year, or er, in April of this past year, being one of the youngest students in the organization. Within three months of joining, being slightly overconfident, I proposed the idea of the climate strike. I didn't quite understand the dynamics of the group yet or how projects work, but in the end, me, 14 at the time, no prior experience with strikes, planned a climate strike. <laughs> now, can any of you remember September 24th? What did you eat for breakfast? Maybe what was the weather like? No. No one remembers, okay. Uh, I woke up on Friday, that Friday morning inspired to see feeds from across the globe. The sun was shining and I was ready to get to work. Then I opened the weather app. Throughout the week, the weather forecast for the 24th was becoming more and more concerning. At 11 a.m., I walked out of school and ran through the pouring rain to get in my car. When we got to the Capitol, we were informed that our scheduled sound system would not be accessible due to the downpour. Just a month earlier, August 24th, DNR released a report for the drought conditions for Minnesota. Almost all of Minnesota had been marked as D2 for severe drought. Around half of our state marked as D3 for extreme drought. In early September, NPR had declared that the Twin Cities average temperature for this summer was 75.7 degrees. That beat out 1988 as the hottest summer in, on record in the Twin Cities. This summer was the hottest summer the capital has ever seen, and yet, on the day I was to advocate for the earth, it rained. <laughs> the earth does not choose when it rains, nor does it choose extreme drought. At first, I was a little angry that all of my work had amounted to a small gathering on the soggy grass in the pouring rain. Then I was grateful. All summer, I had heard about the terrible fires and extreme drought that were ravaging not just Minnesota, but across the globe. That day, though it may appear grim to the eye, was a good day. Again, Father Cassidy said something last week about the barrier of relying on elected officials to help us. Similarly, there is a stigma in the climate justice movement that old people caused all of this and that the young must take it into their own hands. I'm not the person to say what has happened in the past, but I can tell you what needs to happen, what will happen, and why it is important. I can tell you that we need your help. The world needs your help. In whatever way you can, please help. Go out into the world ready to learn and then educate others. 
What you know or learn may not always be right, so never stop learning, never cease to educate. Like our church, our harbor is only maintained by the people in it. It is common at St. Jones and its many ministries to take action wherever action is needed, to be inspired to do the work. What you must take away from this is that not only can anyone help, no matter their size, age, or past, but everyone needs to help. It is now the time where we all must take, make a promise to ourselves, our children, and all of the beauty in this world. You must take action. You must do the impossible, because giving up is never an option. Thank you, grand ships, sailboats, small rowboats, and lighthouses, for inspiring me and the world to be a harbor for others and to protect our own great harbor. I will now write the th light the third Advent candle. 